Hey folks, this is Lonzo, the Godfather of West Coast Hip Hop. Check out my new merch line, folks. I got it all on LonzoWilliams.com. I got merch from the Lyrical Revolution and the old school merch from World Class Wrecking Crew, Juice, Surgery, Turn Off the Lights. All the shirts are available at Lonzo Williams backslash shop. All right, folks, you're live with Lonzo, the Godfather of West Coast Hip Hop. And today my guest is, is somebody by request. They said, Lonzo, you got all the brothers from, from uh, Southern California. Get us somebody from, uh, from up north and preferably uh, Digital Underground. Hey, man, here you go, folks. Today, my guest is strictly from the north, my man Money B from Digital Underground. What's up with you, Money B? What's happening with you, fam? Man, I'm just doing what I do. To... I'm doing what I do, man. Just trying to uh, keep this history alive, man. I can dig it, <laughs> as you should, and as you do. Thank you, Doc. You know? I appreciate that. Uh, what you doing these days, man? I'm doing so much. Uh, of course, um, still touring, as always. You know, um, right now the the functioning members of this running around that are touring is Money Being Young Hump. Huh? Okay. And also from time to time DJ Fuse and Pee Wee, okay. original member, also a member of the Dangerous Crew. Too short. We go out on the road, um, so you'll always be able to catch us spreading the funk that way. I uh, also manage the um, Digital Underground merchandise, merchandising brand. So check out dumerch.com or digitalundergroundtshirts.com. That ought to be fun. Pick up some gear. Um, and of course, you know, I've, I've finished my book, my autobiography. What's it which, called? Um, um, you know, the working title right now is called Hype Man, The Money V Story. And, you know, a lot of people would, will say, like, Money V, you were never a hype man. But really, it's, it's a double meaning, meaning that, you know, throughout my career, or just in the, in the dynamics of Digital Underground, Shock G has always been looked at as the leader, right? right? So, and because Humpty, the Humpty Dance was our biggest hit, you know, he was the most recognizable character in our group. So while that's happening, I was always, even though, you know, equal member, I did just as much as a front man as an MC, the attention was always so much on those other characters that I was able to kind of stand back mm. and and see everything. So I could, I was I was able to look at people looking at us ah. without being looked at. You okay. understand what I'm okay. saying? I got that. And then the other part of it, the other part of it is, you know, when I say hype man, you know, the music industry is just one big hype machine. So we're all hype men in a sense. You know, we're all part of this this hype machine called the music music industry because right. that's all it is right it's so it's all hype you know we, we create these images and whatnot and people invest and believe in them and we run with it on now, both sides what's your background doc um you know in my book i kind of go into it you know even back before i was born and and a lot of people don't know that my father was a member of the black panther party so, you know, I grew up, I went to the Oakland Community School, which is school founded by the Panthers, a school that first um, initiated the free lunch and free breakfast program. They raised money for sickle cell anemia, which a lot of people didn't know that that was a, uh, a mostly a, di a disease that affected mostly black people. Right. Um, you know, Huey P. Newton actually handed me my diploma when I graduated wow, that's deep. from the school. Yeah, you know, yeah, there's 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 pictures. So you like a Panther baby then? Out there. Yeah, I'm a Panther Cub. Okay, a Panther through. Cub, okay, okay. Yeah, you know, that's what we, that's what they call us. And that's what so how do you, is, is that something that you and Tupac had in common? I guess it's gotta be. Yeah, absolutely. So the one thing where it was most prevalent is that when Tupac expressed himself when when he expressed himself or would share his ideas of how he thought or how he saw the world or how he thought it should be, it wasn't foreign to me okay. because the ideas that were instilled in him were the same that were instilled in me. Okay. So where a lot of people looked at him crazy, I had already heard it before. You okay. know what I mean? Okay. So it wasn't far fetched to me. So if, you know, it was, uh, when we would talk, I guess he had a feeling of normalcy around me because I didn't freak out when he would say things. Mm. Okay. Or had these ideas that seemed like, what are you talking about? You know, I kind of understood where he was coming from. Even if even if I didn't agree, I still knew where, where okay. it was coming from. And we could have conversations about it and share, you know, similar stories about our background. I, I got a question for you. Yeah. 
Sure. How, how was it working with Tupac, man? Oh, man. Uh, you know, one, I will always tell people his work ethic was greater than anything that I've ever experienced, mm. you know, since before and since then. You know, he had a work ethic out of this world and he had a, a complete um, confidence about himself from day one okay. that, you know, was undeniable. Now it could get it could get crazy at times just because he, he was he was so he believed him in himself so much he <laughs> was wrong still. He still thought he was right. You know what I mean? I understand. He had to deal with it on I, all levels. I understand. Uh oh uh, I tell people it's funny, man. Uh, me and Atrian has been good friends forever before he even formed TNT Records. And uh, right. for, him, for him to run into Tupac a few years later, and me and Tupac both have the same birthday. And he, he, okay. Adrian mentioned company. You guys remind me, each other, both of y'all think y'all could do anything y'all put y'all mind to. Pretty much think I yeah. can. And, you know, that's what and I that do. That, hey, if I say I, if I think I can do it, this girl, I'm going to damn sure try uh, uh, to make it happen. And, you know, he laughs about that sometimes. Yeah, and the other thing about Pac is he wasn't afraid to question anything. Like, he, if you told him something, he'll ask you why. Mm, you know what I mean? Right, right. You don't just, you wouldn't just take, just because, just because somebody said it okay. doesn't make it true or like that's the law, you know, because, you know, man, man makes law, but not, you know, law is not just what a man <coughs> is, you know what I mean? I totally get it, Doc. I totally get it. So you guys, are uh, you touring, are you a regular tour now? You just going on spot dates and having a good time like we used to or? Well, I mean, it's it's a lot of spot dates. There okay. have been tours. There are tours that are being looked at and worked on as we speak. So, you know, like right now on our schedule, I know we got a date, a few dates coming up. Um, you know, I don't want to share all of them. Some of them are, are surprise dates. Okay. You know what I mean? We're, we're surprise guests at certain events and whatnot. So. Okay. But we're working. Okay, sure. I think that's a good thing, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to doing some dates myself this year uh, as World Class Wrecking Crew, and it's just mm -hmm. amazing, man. That you know the phone don't ring as much, but when it does ring, you know it, they, they, it's real. So it's a good thing to go out yeah. there and have a good. It's it's a good thing to be able to go out and do what you love doing at our age. I don't know about you, at, at my age, you know it's it's still fun to be able to go out there and do it. People still love what you do, and you guys represent. Yeah, and the fact that they yeah, yeah that people still. You know, respect it, enjoy it, or whatever. You, you know guys what had like, you guys had a funk thing, man. That was out of this world, though, dude. I mean, oh yeah. You know, for uh, for not to be a band per se, but to have these funky cuts, man. I was talking to Adrian about some of the things you guys have done with uh, the Humpty Dance being used in commercials, and you know, uh, there's so much going on, man. That's just that's a hell of a thing, Doc. Well, you know what? A lot of people don't know, and I don't even know if. <laughs> If he would even want this to be shared, but fuck it. Come on. Um, Shock used to be in a funk man. Ah, <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, he, I forget the name. Oh, man, I can't remember the name of it. But he was in a band briefly. Okay. And I believe he was like the keyboard player. But, he, like but Shock's like an accomplished piano player too, right? He is. Oh, man, he's a genius. Wow, okay. Uh, that's uh, Adrian told me that. He said, this brother can sit on the piano and he, he's trained in classical music and the whole nine yards. So he's he, well, well, he can, and he was self, you know, self taught. Wow, which is more amazing. So and he knows it. Okay, is there a reason why he don't tour anymore? Or just he just tired of it and just. Well, I think some certain people, you know, they 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 want to move and do it. Okay, as they feel. So for whatever reason, if if he's tired or he's just not enjoying it, you know, from explanation to us he just wanted to take a break okay. but he's okay with uh, everybody else continuing and, okay. and carrying on